minutes and counting, uh, the third best day of the year for the Dow Jones Industrials. Incredible. We have a lot of stocks that are reaching their 12-month high today, uh, whether it's on the Dow or the NASDAQ or a combination of them. Everything is up. A lot of optimism from just about everybody but Peter Schiff. Let's take you to the end of this trading day and start with Terry. Now, Terry, the question is, when do those people? We talked a little bit about the people who are all in cash. And in fact, a lot of folks overseas are in cash as well. Are, when did they see? That it clearly, it wasn't 12,500 unless some of that money, because the volume is still pretty low. So, when did they feel comfortable getting into this market? I, uh, I, that's the $64,000 question. Uh, you know, one thing that concerns me is there didn't seem to be that much uh, panic or concern even among small investors during this whole ride down. And we know that you know the Dow was off about 13, 14 percent from its highs. Mm -hmm. And I didn't hear so many people talking about you know. Oh my God! What's going on? Or I'm going to take money out of my 401k. I know the mutual fund flows show show some significant outflows, but I don't know if this is the time where people are going to feel comfortable to get back in. Uh, Victoria Barrett, we were using Pulte Homes as an example in the last uh, segment, just about how that was an eight dollar stock just a month or two ago, and now if you were to look at Pulte Homes today, it's getting closer and closer to sixteen dollars. So that moment of fear, where all the home builders were drenched in horror. Now everybody's up today, and, and Pulte's nearly doubled its money. Yeah, the home builders really got clobbered early, and since then, sort of every sector has gotten clobbered. There's no no safe space, um, I guess, with the exception of gold and, and what Peter's doing. But you could be in tech, you could be in um, even in oil, and you, you didn't do that well. Um, so... I think to your point of what's the moment when people finally get back in, it's when you hear executives on earnings calls optimistic about the future. And we haven't heard that yet. People are very cautious. They're saying deals aren't getting done. They need to go through more approvals. Everyone is kind of frozen right now. And I don't see any signs of that turning, not, not in technology, certainly. Well, and let's move over to financials, Peter. I know you don't think this is the right time to buy into financials. It may not be for decades, according to you. But, <laughs> but the point is, people did it for some reason today. Why? Was it because? Because of the news of the write down by UBS and thinking that maybe finally we're getting a price for some of these financial firms. And by the way, Peter, David pointed out we got an email from a viewer who said, What the heck is a write down anyway and how does it affect us? Well, a write down is a, is a loss. I mean, they're, you know, they're having to d d disclose that their collateral isn't worth what but they, they thought it was. wipe it off? And they've got to just take a hit against their earnings. Just, you know, it's like if you, um, Americans have to write down the value of their house, right? You bought a house for $500,000, it's only worth $300,000. Like a two hundred thousand dollar write down, but you know I don't know what the catalyst is today. You know bear markets have rallies; they have spectacular rallies, and uh, and so you're going to have them. But you know, remember if you look at the catalyst again today, talking about all these problems for the banks, the investment banks in Europe. Why did they have problems? It was because of money they loaned us that we can't pay them back. It's because of all the bad paper that Wall Street sold them. It's not really? because of problems in Europe. It's because of problems here. And, and so I, I don't think you're going to see you know, the ECB reacting to these losses by saying, oh, gee, we need a rate cut here in Europe with inflation running at 3.5% over there and unemployment at a 15-year low in Germany. So I think it's you know, a short covering rally. Uh, you know, people are positioning here, but you know, the, market, the trend's still down. But I would just you know. Jordan, trend up or down, isn't there always a way to make money in any market? You know, it's so funny you said that, Liz. I was just going to say there's always a bull market going on somewhere. And if you look around, you'll notice that the things that got absolutely clobbered, which I think Victoria was saying before, the home bills got smashed last year. Financials got annihilated. The retailers got hit. These are the strongest areas. So within this tape, there are some areas of bifurcation. There are some strong areas that are seeing money flows. And these institutions have to put their money somewhere, hopefully for some period of duration where we can capitalize on them. But absolutely, there's always some place to go. If you notice, there's also another salty. The dollar has gotten traction in the last couple of weeks on several different sessions. And if you see today, the dollar's been strong again. Any time the dollar digs its heels in, which everybody in the world is betting against right now, you've got to believe there's some daylight. <laughs> Terry, I, I, I just want to put it full circle because we had a great guest on who was buying these houses in bulk and then repackaging them yes. and selling them. He said tons there of is money. no, the economy there is Michigan. no problem that that the right price won't fix. I love see, that, that, that response. Did you see these auto sales numbers? 
Farmers down 19% for price the stocks for are up. GM. This guy's packaging homes in Michigan. <laughs> in Toyota, even Toyota can't sell cars in the U.S. Down 10%. Yeah. I've never seen numbers like that. Listen, but at, at the right price, he's selling these houses. Who's buying them? At the right price, I'll have 20 pairs of Labo 10 pumps. <laughs> <laughs> Only Always Terry, puts it in Labo perspective. pumps. I love it. Well, as we, as we finish up and we get closer here, just a minute away to the opening bell, Peter, uh, again, there are always places to make money. You said you were buying some of the miners today. Yeah, Where do you I did. see them going? Well, they're going to go higher. We've had a very sharp correction in, in gold mining stocks. Many of these stocks that were at you know, all-time highs just a week, two weeks ago have, have dropped 20% in, in just a span of a week, a week and a half. You know, just like bear market, you know, bull market rallies are spectacular. Bear market drops are, are just as spectacular. And the big moves down are in the mining sector, in precious metals. It's a great time to buy. And Victoria, we got 10 seconds. NASDAQ, as we hear the closing bell, that's the story of the day. It's up 3.58%. Any particular stocks stand out quickly? Well, I think you look at Amazon, Salesforce, companies that are driving what I like to think of as the cheap revolution. We talk a lot about it at Forbes. Companies that are giving you leverage. All right. Terrific. Thank you, gang. Well, Thanks. look at this. We